Shall we bow our heads as I pray? Father, we just thank you for this wonderful opportunity of preaching your word, Lord. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit is going to anoint and cause the words that come forth to sink deep into our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for a wonderful service thus far and the sense of your presence here and the dedication of the little baby, Lord. We just thank you for all your mighty work and like your hand in this service. I pray, Lord, no matter who it is that's here, that their needs will be met. And I pray, Lord, that you're going to awaken us to the reality of your soon coming. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I was reading a devotional uh, book by Myers, all right, F.B. Myers. It was called The Folly of Being Unprepared. And God spoke to me through that message. And uh, from there, uh, this message that I'm going to preach to you was born. I'm going to name it, Are You Ready? Are you ready? All right. Jesus is coming again. All right. He came the first time to die for our sins and to open up a way for us to come to God that we might become a member of the family of God. Just like that little boy when he was born, he then became a member of that family. So when we're born into Christ, we become a member of the family of God. And Jesus promised us in John 14, 1 to 3, all right? He says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And that's when he ascended up from his disciples, all right, and went up into heaven. He said he was preparing a place for us up there in heaven. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. Amen. I don't know if you really believe that or not. <laughs> Do you really believe it? Yes. He is coming again, and he said, I will definitely come, and when I come, I'm going to take you to be with me. In Titus chapter 2, verse 13, it says, looking for that blessed hope. That word looking for means, all right, to expect. Waiting, longing, all right? When my kids said that they're going to come out from the States, then you start counting the days, expecting, waiting for them to show up. But this is something even more than that, all right? Do we really think about this or not? Do we really every day, Lord, are you coming today? Lord, is it today that you are coming? We don't want it to happen and we're not aware of it. You know, that, that would be a terrible thing. It says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus here calls this the blessed hope of the believer. You know, hope is always something in the future, all right? And this blessed hope of the believer that Jesus is coming, he could come any day, morning, noon, or night, because around the world, uh, you know, it's like daytime here, but in America, it's probably in the nighttime. Someplace else, it's in the evening. Someplace else, it's wee hours of the morning. So depending where you are, we don't know exactly when he's coming. All right? And that blessed hope is the beacon of light that draws us on, that ray of light that keeps 
us going. In fact, the Bible says we are saved by hope. That's why the devil likes to get us into depression. Because when you get into depression, you have no hope. And you're just downcast. And don't, don't let the devil, no matter what it is, don't let anything get you down. Because we are to hope. And that hope keeps us alive. Amen. All right. Um, Jesus, in fact, likens his coming to a thief in the night. That's why he tells us, watch. Watch. And he's not talking about natural watching. He's talking about being spiritually alert, spiritually awake, spiritually on guard. Matthew 24, 42 says, Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour the Lord, your Lord, doth come. All right? But know this, verse 43, if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have allowed or suffered his house to be broken up. You see, when a thief comes, he never announces it ahead of time. He never phones you up and says, you know, in about 10 minutes, I'm going to be there. I'm going to rob your house. No, no, no. You never know about a thief. All right? He comes unannounced. He comes unexpected. He comes when you're least prepared. I remember one time, this was when I was living in Barker Road. And our bedrooms were on that end of the house. And then you came into the kitchen. And from the kitchen, there was a door that went like onto a kind of a little porch, but it was an enclosed. <clears throat> and then there was this closet. It wasn't a closet. I used it as a storeroom, you know, for canned goods, this, that, the other. And my washing machine and dryer were out there. And I remember coming one morning, and I don't know what made me go into that room. You know, I had no reason to go in there. <clears throat> and when I went in there, I saw one of my butcher knives laying there. And suddenly, I realized there had been a thief come into the house. I didn't know it at all. And he wanted to be prepared, and he went in the kitchen and got one of my knives and brought it in there and had it there in case we came upon him unexpectedly. He would have that knife to attack us. I'm telling you, my heart just almost went for fluid. <laughs> And I never knew a thing. And I don't know what happened, if some noise happened, if God caused the dryer suddenly to start doing whatever it was, you know. And oh, what I didn't tell you was my husband's attache case was there, open. He had been going through that looking for money, and the knife was right there, and then. But when I got there, nobody was there. But definitely signs it was a thief had come into my house. So let me tell you, when a thief comes, we, we least expect him. And that's how Jesus will come. That's why he tells you, be ready, all right? Matthew 24, 44. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Matthew 24, 27. As the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west. That's how lightning comes. That fast, Jesus will have come and taken his bride. There's no time. Whoa, I need to get ready. No, 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 no. By the time you even think of getting ready, he's come, taken his bride, and left. 
All right. Uh, it says, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, you say, how do you know this is when he comes to take his bride away? Let's look at Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and listen to this, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now there's another verse over in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 when the second coming of the Lord comes and Jesus is coming back to his feet are going to touch the ground and we're coming with him. How can we come with him till we first are caught up to be with him? And in Revelation 1 7 it says in that coming when Jesus comes with all of his saints all right it says every eye shall behold him every eye shall behold him but this verse that i read to you is to those that look for him only those are is he going to appear are you looking for him are you waiting for him are you longing for him all right um i remember this one time, this is when I first came to Singapore uh, years ago, and there was a missionary couple called Brother and Sister Nolan. We were very good friends with them, but I don't remember what happened. Something happened, and I really got mad inside. I, I you know, we would get together almost every day, not on their part, it was more on our part. And I just thought to myself, forget you. I'm not going to your house anymore. I was really uptight. And you know what the Lord said to me? He says, what if I would come today? Isn't that important to you? I do. <laughs> Here I am mad at them. So angry, I'm saying, I don't want to have any more fellowship with you. And the Lord said, if I were to come today, no, 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 God. I said, don't. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. And I choose to forgive them right now because I realized that anger against my brother and sister and not wanting to fellowship with them would keep me from being caught away. That's what it means to watch. Be careful. Because if you're in the midst of something that is wrong, you're in the midst of giving in to yourself and doing what the flesh wants you to do, and Jesus suddenly comes, you're going to be left behind. You know, I think about it carefully. You know, when I was younger, I was very a very fleshly Christian. I'm sad to say that. But I gave into my flesh a lot. And when God began to deal with me and let me realize if you want to be ready for me, you can't be messing around like this because I'm not going to take it. Is it important really to get what you want, to have your desires met? Or is it more important to keep our eyes on him, to stay in the realm of the spirit, to walk in the spirit and be ready no matter when he comes? Because just like the twinkling of an eye, you know, that's more than blinking an eye, the twinkling of an eye, you know, just like that, that light in your eye, it goes like that. He's coming, coming. There's no time to get ready. You have to be ready when the Lord comes. Amen. Um, so it says here in Ephesians 5, 15, see then, all right, not only be ready, but this verse is telling us to be wise, to be wise. See then that you walk circumspectly not as fools, 
but as wise. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They act like there's no God. They just think they can do whatever they want. They think there's no day of accountability, but the wise know what the will of God is, all right? What is circumspectly? Walk circumspectly, exactly, diligently, perfectly. Um, you know, do we really know what the will of God is, all right? God is not willing, it says, all right, that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That is the will of God. That is the whole reason Jesus died on the cross, because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is interested in souls. You and I might be interested in money. You and I might be interested in games. You and I might be interested in food. You and I might be interested in anything and everything, but God is interested in souls. So much so that he sacrificed his only begotten son that souls should be one. I've preached here many times, so I'm sure I've told the story before, but there was a man he worked for Shell Oil. Ever heard of short Shell Oil? Uh, we have all different kind of petrol kiosks, but this was place sold Shell Oil. And he was a Christian. In fact, he was a spirit-filled Christian. And he was an Assembly of God deacon in the church. He was a deacon. His pastor told this story. When he came to church, you say, did he love the Lord? I'm sure he must have thought he did. But whenever he came to church, as soon as church was over, he was talking to people about shell oil, shell oil. You need to buy shares in shell oil. Shares, shares, and that was all he talked about, no matter where he went. One day he didn't feel well. Uh, in fact, he had been not feeling good for some time. And so he went to the doctor and they said that they were gonna do an exploratory, um, this was ages ago, now they would do whatever that thing is, that, you know, check it out, yeah. But they didn't have that in those days. So uh, an exploratory operation and when they did, they found out he was riddled with cancer. He had cancer in every part of his body. Why he hadn't really felt worse than what he did. And so they just sewed him up and they told him, they said, you have six months to live, six months. His pastor came to visit him and he told the pastor this story. He said, when I was out under the anesthesia, suddenly I found myself in, in, in a queue. I was lined up, you know, and I, I really didn't know what it was all about. And then he said, I saw in everybody's arm, they had a basket. And pretty soon I saw Jesus, just his face. He was maybe two or three people ahead of me. And he said, I suddenly felt a weight on my arm and I looked and there was a basket, but it was empty. He said, other people had half full, quarter full of flowers and things like that, but his was empty. And when he came up to Jesus, suddenly there he was facing Jesus. Jesus looked at him and looked at his basket. And he said, I told him, Jesus, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. It's all about souls. I didn't understand. Please give me a second chance. Please give me a second chance. And you know what Jesus said to him? 
you have 30 days. You have 30 days. And he said, I woke up. The doctors tell me I have cancer. They've given me six months, but I remember Jesus said I have 30 days. And you know, he never talked shell oil one time. In that 30 days, he asked for telephone. He would phone this one, that one. All he talked about is getting saved, getting ready, get going up to heaven. You're going to have to be ready, ready, ready. And in 30 days, he was dead. 30 days, he was dead. Friend, sometimes we don't realize why we're saved. When I was born again, I was just so thankful. I don't need to go to hell. I don't need to go to hell. That's about all I can think of. That, you know, I just don't need to go to hell. I get to go to heaven. No. If we're here on earth, Jesus died to win souls. And if we have time, our main job, our main occupation is to win souls. Because when we get to heaven, are we going to have an empty basket? Or are we going to have a few souls we can offer to the Lord? Hmm? Don't forget that, all right? Be wise. Know what the will of the Lord is. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. <clears throat> Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Remember, he's not willing that any should perish. I remember another story that I read. It was the person that wrote Living Like a King's Kid. Have you ever read that book? Living Like a King's Kid. And he was on an airplane and suddenly they were going to start to land and the voice came from the cockpit and said, somehow our landing gear isn't working. So get prepared for a crash landing. Whoa, people started crying and you know, and, and he settled back in his chair and he said, Praise God, at least I'm going to go out, I get to go to heaven. And the Lord said, why do you think I put you on this plane? So you're ready to go to heaven. What about all these in this plane? They're not ready. Get up and tell them about it. And he stood up and he began to preach to them. And people were weeping and crying. Several wanted to accept the Lord because they knew they were facing eternity. And just then the cockpit said, wow, somebody's prayers were answered. The landing gear has come in order again. But you know, all he was concerned was that he got to go to heaven. No, it's more than that. He has saved you, he has saved me, he has given us this blessed hope. But he wants to live through you and me. He wants to use you and he wants to use me to tell others to help them also come to the Lord. So be ready. Be wise. All right. Be filled. Verse 18. It says, we read 17. Be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled. And actually in the Greek, it's be being filled. That is the tense. Be being filled, all right, uh, with the spirit. Wine is natural exhilaration. And if we're imbibing ourselves with the things of this life, it says there's excess. When you start to drink wine, you take a cup, you take another cup, and the next thing you know, you're drunk. You don't know what you're doing. It says don't do that. That's not good. 
but be filled, be being filled. You're, you know, just like wine makes you forget your problems and wine makes you feel happy and I don't, I don't know, I've never been a wine drinker, so I'm only telling you what I've heard. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But the Spirit of God can do this for us spiritually so that our problems aren't the problem any longer because he lifts us up above it all and we are in a realm that is above all that. We look down on the whole thing and realize the things of this world can't get at us. We are free from it, all right? So it says, be being filled. Luke 21, 34 says, take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life so that that day come upon you unaware. Be careful. You have to watch out because your life can just become, you know, overcharged. When something is overcharged, the, you know, the battery goes out, it goes kerfluey, all right? Uh, surfeiting is eating, 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 partying, all right? Uh, getting drunk, and this one, the cares of this life. You know, you, you might say, oh, I don't eat, I don't drink, but what about the cares of this life? I gotta do this, I gotta do that, do, 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 go, 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 go. Sometimes our life gets so busy. We're not really doing anything wrong per se, but we're so busy we have no time to read the Bible, we have no time to pray, we have no time to think about the Lord. And if that happens and Jesus comes, you can say, but I knew he was coming, but I didn't think he would come this quickly. It's too late if he does. Listen to verse 35. This is Luke 21. As a snare, as a trap, shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. The coming of the Lord. All right? Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and that you will be standing before the Son of Man. See, I'm telling you this, very, listen carefully, all right? Jesus is gonna come before the Antichrist comes. I don't care what anybody tells you that the Antichrist is already here. He's not here as Antichrist yet. He cannot come until Jesus takes away his waiting bride. And if you and I are ready, he'll catch us away. And that's what it says here. Pray that you will be counted worthy, all right? That you'll miss everything that's going to come. Because all hell is going to break loose on this earth when Antichrist takes over. You and I don't want to be here. Don't miss the rapture. Those that go up in the rapture do not have to go through the, the great tribulation that is going to take place. Then they don't have to go through the wrath of God and all of that. There's a lot that's going to take place. Friends, I don't want to be here. The book of Revelation tells me there's a group of Gentiles there's a multitude that cannot be numbered. No, the bride is numbered. All right? Bear this in mind. If you're going to go up in that rapture, in the book of Revelation, they're a numbered group. There's the Old Testament bride. They're numbered. There's the New Testament that will be any of us that are ready. It's a, the 24 elders. It's a numbered group. In the great tribulation, the Jewish 
There's a numbered group, 144,000. They're all the bride of Christ in diff Old Testament, New Testament, and what, what is it? The tri tribulation time. God's going to have a people that are his bride. But in this time, there's Gentiles. You, Most of us are Gentiles. And there is a multitude in chapter 7 It says no man could number them. They didn't make it in the rapture. Their garments, they had to wash them. Because when Jesus came, those white garments that he gives us when we first get saved got dirtied, sullied up so that when the rapture came, they weren't ready. They got ready, but they missed the rapture. Yes, they made it to heaven, but they went through part of the tribulation. I don't want to go through part. Pray, Jesus said, that you are accounted worthy to escape all of these things that are going to come to pass. That you'll be up there already looking down. Friends, are you ready? That's what I want to ask you. I actually had two parts to this. I kind of felt like I would never get to the virgin. So let me finish part one and it's time to close. Let us be glad. Revelation 19, 7. Let us be glad and rejoice. Give honor to him because the bride will be ready. The bride will be ready. It says, give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. The bride makes sure she's ready, all right? And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Nine, he saith unto... No. No. <laughs> okay, well. Well, he told me I could continue. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the Lord wants you to hear some more. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Friends, it's not enough to be called. Matthew twenty-two fourteen 14 says, many are called, but few are chosen. See? All of us have been called if we're born again. But to be chosen to be the bride of Christ, it's a group taken out of the body. It's not the whole body. Do you remember Adam? Did God take all his ribs when he made the wife? He took one rib out of the body of Adam and out of that one rib he made Eve. Jesus is the whole body, all of us together. But out of that body there are those that will be the bride. They're taken first. I want you to know, friends, and I've told this story before, but I'm going to tell it again. When I was a little girl, I better not get out there without my cane. I'm liable to land on the floor. My mother bought a pair of scissors. They were from Germany, if I'm not mistaken. As a little girl, they looked huge. The, the, Blades, just, it, it was me. We had a lady that would come and do our sewing every week. And uh, these scissors that my mother had were, um, what, what do you call magnetic. it? When, magnetic. Magnetic, yeah. And then she had these straight pins, you know, that also were magnetic, see. And that was, oh, I love that game, my own game, huh? And I would take these, uh, and we had a rug on the floor, and I would take these pins, and I would go like that and throw them all over, and that poor lady, you know, that 
did the sewing too. And she probably thought she had to go around and pick them all up. Then I would take these scissors and I would open them up and I would come down slowly, slowly, slowly and get so far and then thump, 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 thump. They would be magnetized to those scissors. I'd get them all and then throw them again and go again, you know. But listen, are you magnetized to Jesus? Because when he comes, he comes halfway. And if you are magnetized to him, you'll just go up and meet him in the air. And if you're dead, you'll come out of your grave. And do, do, do. <laughs> but if you're magnetized to food, money, partying, business, work, what magnetizes you? Are you drawn to that? When Jesus comes, you're stuck there. You don't go up. You have to be magnetized to him. Don't you? We'll go up. Are you ready? Are you ready? Um, okay. Do I go on? Okay. I'm going to tell you the story, but I'm going to condense it. I'll, I'll condense it, all right? The parable of the ten virgins. Do you remember that story? The ten virgins. Now, if they're a virgin, that meant they belong to Jesus, all right? But out of that ten, five are wise. They know what the master wants. And five are foolish. Now, these five virgins don't talk about or the ten virgins. They're not talking about the church corporate. That means the whole body. It's talking about you and myself as an individual child of God. As an individual believer, each of us are responsible for the choices that we make. I'm not responsible for your choices. You're not responsible for mine. All right. Five is the number of grace. And five were wise, five were foolish. All right, the wise knew what the will of God was. All right. But the foolish five made five great mistakes. All right. The first mistake they made was they made no provision for the continuation of their light. They had a light. It was not an electric light. Uh, it was a lamp with a wick, and, and you had oil there, and then you put a flame on that uh, wick, all right, and then the light would shine. But the Bible tells us they took no oil with them. And we know that the oil represents the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of people that get saved, but they don't think they need the Holy Spirit. Somehow they think they already have it. I don't know where they think they have it because when you're a sinner, the Holy Spirit cannot fill you because that he would judge you. You have to be born again, and only after you're born again, then the Holy Spirit can come upon you, all right? Anyways, they took no oil with them. But the wise took oil with them, all right? It's not enough to have a lamp, but that lamp must keep going. There must be, you know, fire for it to feed on. And in this way, we see there are many people, they start well, but they don't end up well. They start well, but somewhere uh, they don't continue to burn brightly for Jesus. Proverbs 20, 27 says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. They have lamps, but they neglected to take the oil, which is the work of the Holy Spirit, enabling us to fellowship with the Lord, pray, study the word, fellowship with the saints. This is the work of the Holy Spirit, all right? Number two, they slept while the 
while the bridegroom tarried, it says they all slumbered and slept. But I want you to know there's a difference between the sleep of the wise and the sleep of the unwise, all right? Five were foolish, so the, there's two kinds of sleep, all right? The one comes from a realization of you're secure, you're, it comes from trust, you've done everything you need to do, and you're, you're okay. And I'm gonna use Peter as an example, all right? Um, remember when he was gonna be killed? He had been taken and he was locked between soldiers and he was sound asleep. He wasn't, oh God, what am I gonna do? They're gonna kill me. No, he was calm. And even though he was chained, knowing that he was gonna die in the morning, he was sound asleep because inside everything was right with God. That then you can sleep soundly. Then you can sleep because you know all is well, all right? There's a difference between the sleep of the wise and the sleep of the unwise, all right? There's another kind of sleep, though, and that's the sleep of the unwise. I'm gonna read this off of my paper, all right? The sleep of the sentry. You know what the sentry is? He's standing guard. He's watching out for the enemy. And when the enemy comes, he is to sound the alarm. He's to tell people, get ready, the enemy is coming. But this sentry, instead of being on duty and awake and alert, he Many people are going to die because he was asleep when he should have been watching, all right? Uh, there's the sleep of the pilot when the ship is heading for the rocks. That's no time to be asleep if you're piloting a ship. You understand what I mean? There's the sleep of the nurse when the patient's life is in balance and you're gonna, and the poor patient uh, 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 can't breathe but we're too sound asleep to know it. No, no, no. The unwise, they are ready at all times because God has given them a job to do, all right? At midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and go out and meet him. And they all arose and trimmed their lamps. Now, we're telling you what those foolish virgins, they made mistakes. They thought, this is mistake number three, they thought they could, can you give me some of yours? Share, share love. I take some of your, no. You can't take something like that from somebody else, all right? Give us of your oil. Our lamps are gone out. The wise said, no, you can't do that, all right? There won't be enough for us or you. You better go buy your own. Notice that word buy. It costs us something to be ready. It costs us denying the self. It costs us saying no to self so that my spirit man is ready when Jesus comes. Everyone has our own responsibility. And it says, you know, so they went to buy and they thought they would be able to get in. But while they went to get the oil, the wise went up and they were left behind. They still thought they could get in because they thought God would recognize them. And they knocked on the door and they said, oh, open to us, open to us. And Jesus said, I don't know you. Now, I don't think that had to do with salvation. It had to do with his bride. They got left behind. He didn't know them as his bride, all right? And they never made it. So friends, I'm here to tell you, we need to be ready when the Lord comes, all right? 
And I want to ask each of you, you need to ask yourself this, does Jesus know me? Will he recognize me? Am I ready to be the bride of Christ? <clears throat> Will he catch me away? In the very end, will Jesus recognize me? And the only way to be sure is to get our heart ready today and keep it ready every day, all right? Make sure that we come to the foot of the cross and make sure we have the Holy Spirit and make sure we're being <clears throat> filled with the Holy Spirit every day. No, I, I don't think I can go. I want, <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, I come against this. Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Take your hands off my vocal cords. I am not yet finished and I need my vocal cords. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed. If Jesus were to come now, are you ready? Would you be caught up or would you be left behind? Close your eyes and cry out to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, if there's anything in my life that would keep me from being caught away, show me now so I can be cleansed, purified, washed, by the blood of Jesus. If you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'm here to tell you, only people that are baptized in the Holy Spirit are going to make it in the rapture because it's the first fruits catching away. The whole, and they're called first fruits. That means they mature first. All right? And the Holy Spirit is the only one they can help us to mature in our life with Christ. If you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to start crying out to him and say, I need you, Lord. I want you, Lord. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit. I want to be ready, Lord, when you come. I want to be magnetized to you. I want to be caught away. If there's anyone here now that you're not sure if Jesus would come during this service, if you will go up, but you want to be ready, I want you to stand to your feet and stay standing. And I'm just going to pray over you, and then I'm going to turn it over to my brother. If you are not sure that you will go up if the rapture takes place, but you want to be ready, just stand to your feet. If you know you're ready, don't stand to your feet. That's fine. Spirit of the living God, I ask you right now as you see these, nobody should be looking around and looking in their own heart. But Lord, you see every person that's standing, no matter which section of this church it is. They want to be ready. Lord, it's not just standing to their feet, but as of today, touch them with the mighty power of your Holy Spirit. Breathe upon them, Lord, and every day may they cry out to you. Every day may they lay hold of your Spirit. Every day may they be filled, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Every day speaking out in other tongues. If you're standing and you have never spoken in tongues before, 
those that are standing but you have spoken in tongues those that we're going to start to pray and praise God by praying in tongues and those if you're standing and you've never expect it right now and begin to worship God in the language of the spirit don't say I, I don't know because when you receive the spirit he will pray through you Father, right now, breathe upon each and every person that is here. Breathe your breath of life upon them. Hallelujah. Everybody that can and knows how, start praying in tongues. Those of you that are standing, if you've never done it, say, Lord, fill me now. And open your mouth and believe that you're going to start praying in tongues. Shalomahaya lomahatai. Out of the innermost part of their being shall flow rivers of living water. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you and we praise you. You may be seated.